Greetings from my rooftop apiary in Wantage. So as you'll see behind me, I've got, uh, got my hives and beyond yonder is the back garden and the rest of Wantage. And I'd like to give you an update as to all of my happenings in the world of beekeeping. The other issue I've been grappling with over the Christmas period is how to maintain uh, my new apiary uh, up on the Berkshire Downs. Um, so I've been thinking about, okay, well, uh, primarily I want the, the land, which is about half a hectare or nearly, uh, it's about one and a half acres. Um, how am I going to maintain it primarily as a, a meadow? Um, I'm big on flowers and so are the bees. Um, and to do that, the, the grass needs to be cut or, or um, eaten on a, on a frequent basis. So I've considered, could I graze sheep? Well, I've got zero experience of sheep and I understand that the wool of sheep doesn't really um, pay very well and the meat, well, I've got no experience of slaughter or that, that, that kind of food processing and if I've got a, a vet's bill for uh, that, that type of cattle then it'd probably blow me out of the water so that wasn't an option. I've looked at the uh, idea of chicken tractors, I know something about chickens um, but I would probably have to go and visit the chickens every day and I don't think they would be able to um, forage on, on areas of land at a quick enough rate to sort out the whole of that plot. Um, so that, that was um, not really, really feasible. Um, then the idea of buying some sort of powered motor, maybe uh, a small one. The, the, the thing at the moment is the, the, um, the plot is relatively overgrown and the um, the grass and the shrubs and the thistles are, are still at quite a, a tall height so it would need more than a mower but say for the sake of argument we, we overcome that problem uh, how would we maintain it afterwards? Well I thought about well I suppose I could purchase a, a mower but then I'd have to bring a jerry can of petrol along with me and to do muck around with naked flames with, with my, my smoker and, and I'm trying to be environmentally friendly and, and have a low carbon footprint. So burning fossil fuels to power a mower um, doesn't ring too comfortably with me. So what my latest thought is, is going back to the 19th century and watch this. So what I'm going to use as a piece of technology, it probably dates back centuries, if not millennia. And it relies on the skill and the brawn um, of its operator. Let me show you. And here we have it. The scythe. It's been brought into the 21st century uh, by the use of a uh, strong but light aluminium alloy snaff. And, um, and, a, and a very long 30 inch uh, scything blade. Still to develop a few skills on this, and uh, yeah, a little bit out of breath, but it's but it's uh, more productive than say buying a gym membership and just wasting your energy on a treadmill or something. 
and um, yeah I'm making progress with this uh, uh, strip of land I think there's one or two tactics I might need to do as to um, the, the pile of um, debris or, or I think it's called swath um, I, maybe I need to keep always keep um, to the right of that otherwise I'm, I'm moving, moving the swath as well as cutting with the scythe and, and also I may, may need to um, adjust the blades or I should say maybe I need to occasionally adjust the blade I'm not sure um, whether I've got the, the scythe blade on properly or not um, but I think I've made quite good progress One of the things I'm quite excited about with this uh, plot of land is it has some quite interesting mature trees. Um, I say interesting, I mean interesting from one point of view. Uh, a beekeeping point of view, of course. Okay. This tree has this beautiful hole in it. The, the original habitat of the honeybee would have been, back in the day, uh, before man really went crazy in terms of agriculture and chopping down trees, especially in, uh, in this island. These hollows, th this, this would have been the natural habitat for the honeybee. And people have um, done, done some research, uh, in, in particular, most notable today is Derek Mitchell's on, on the thermal properties of um, tree cavities compared to the existing wooden box hive. And it turns out that uh, a habitat like this uh, for for honeybee colony is far superior in terms of its thermal properties than a wooden box hive. Um, now, basically, the the honeybee has evolved to live in a habitat like this, and it's no surprise that uh, modern hives, say made out of polystyrene, which have far superior thermal properties than the wooden box hive um, give give the bees uh, quite an advantage in terms of managing uh, the heat uh, within the hive and actually uh, maintaining the hive for hygiene purposes and also to control um, pests and diseases so we like to think um, with this with the start of this new um, apiary on, on this plot that um, if accidentally um, one of my hives swarms and finds itself in say for instance that cavity um, I think it would make quite an interesting study over the coming months and years but you know we'll see what happens I, I'm very pleased with um, what I've achieved this afternoon and uh, I'll, I'll carry on another day.